Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. Welcome to another video. You may remember that quite recently I did a video talking about short exposure astrophotography on an Altaz mount and some of the limitations involved with that sort of photography. Well, I thought I would do this video to just in very simple terms explain the difference between the Altaz system versus the equatorial system and how that relates to astrophotography and why one is better than the other. This is going to be in simple terms terms, no figures, no maths, nothing like that. So I hope you find it helpful. And if you do, please hit like. And if you like this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe. Now, first of all, let's look at the Altaz system. Altaz stands for altitude and azimuth. And what you have here is an imaginary grid that is placed across the whole sky. So this is as it would look on the 24th of March from my location at a particular time of night from Oxford. This this grid has a centre at the bit directly above your head, i.e. the zenith, and then it kind of spreads out from there. So altitude is how far above the horizon something is and the azimuth is how far round from north it is. The thing that makes this grid system very different from equatorial is that this grid system is specific to your location. So if a star is at a particular altitude and azimuth from here, at exactly the same time, somebody 50 miles north of me will have the star at a different altitude and azimuth. So it is an imaginary grid set around your location, which will change as you move around the globe. If you look at the grid lines here, you can see that they, they form concentric rings. And if you have an Altaz mount, it, that is the planes that it will track in. So you can move it up and down side to side. And if I just show you this animation, just pick a star, any of the bright stars on this animation and just watch it. And you will see that it doesn't follow those grid lines. It will for a little bit, but then it disappears again and goes out of shot of that line and that is exactly what happens if you are starting to do kind of longer exposure astrophotography um, with an Altaz mount even if the star stays in the field of view for a particular time you will notice that the the kind of sky looks like it's rotating within your images and this is something called field rotation and this is the reason why people say you can't do astrophotography with an Altaz mount this is taken with a 70 mil refractor it's a 60 second shot on an Altaz mount that was tracking and you can see the stars have slightly trailed but if you look at what one corner of the picture versus the other, the stars have trailed in a different direction. And that is because the entire sky is rotated relative to um, basically the way that the mount is moving. So the mount can only go side to side or up and down. So let's just bring up the Altaz system again to just show you that grid system. And then I'm going to overlay the equatorial system on top of that to show you the difference. Now, first of all, you'll notice that the center of the equatorial system is in a completely different place from the Altaz system. And that will be the case wherever you are on the globe, unless you are at one of the polar regions. If you know your constellations, you will recognize that the center of the equatorial system is um, where Polaris is or the pole star are very close to it anyway and that is the north celestial pole and the other big difference here is that the are uh, the equatorial system is measured in RA and DEC first of all right ascension and declination and that system is specific to the actual stars not just the sky around your location so irrespective of where you are in the world, the RA and deck of an object is the same. So it's, it's, it's the object, a star or a deep sky object. It's its fixed kind of RA and deck in space and it will always be at that RA and deck. Exactly where that is in your sky obviously is going to change from wherever you are. So for me, at 52 degrees north, the centre of this equatorial system is 52 degrees above the horizon around the pole star. The grid lines here are not uniform concentric circles the way that it looked on the Altaz system. 
And the big difference here is that if you have pointed the declination axis of an equatorial mount perfectly at the pole star, the RA motors will keep the stars in the field of view perfectly without any field rotation. And if you look at any of the stars on this animation, you'll see that they're following those lines. Now, because that is offset from the zenith, the the track that it makes is a different shape. So close to the pole, it's kind of like a tight circle. When you get over to the south celestial pole, it's tracking more of a straight line. So it looks very, very different from the Altaz system. But because it keeps the things in shot more easily, it means that you can really push your exposure times up. That doesn't mean you can't do imaging with an Altaz mount. It just means you need to choose your targets carefully, pick something bright that will be picked up on a shorter exposure. And actually, this was the left hand picture here was done with two second exposures, but I could very well have done 15, 20 second exposures on that mount tracking and it would have been fine. On the right hand side, though, you can see that once you can push your exposure times up to 90 seconds or more, then you can really pick up more detail and that's going to be great if you are wanting to photograph objects that are much fainter like maybe a really faint nebula or a faint galaxy or something like that. So just to reiterate I hate this kind of notion that you can't do astrophotography unless you have a specific thing. You can do astrophotography, you just have to choose your targets carefully and adapt your technique to suit the equipment that you've got. In the case of equatorial versus Altaz. Equatorial is definitely better for deep sky and complex imaging, but you can get by with an Altaz if you're doing things that can be picked up on short exposures. So I hope that's a whistle-stop tour of the equatorial system versus the Altaz system, but I hope it made sense to you. I hope you found that useful and take care everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.